Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Takeaway Tip Tuesday. I am your host, Ramona Remesat. I am an intuitive guidance coach, angel therapy practitioner, speaker, and co-author of two Amazon bestsellers, 365 Days of Angel Prayers, and 365 Ways to Connect with Your Soul. And I'm so glad that you're back here for another episode. And uh, I hope that while I was away on holidays, you took that as an opportunity to catch up on some past episodes here. And um, I'm back today. So let me just get this camera fixed because it's kind of wonky. Hold on a minute. Uh, it's a little bit crooked. I don't know what's going on with this today. That's a little bit better. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Alrighty, so today's topic is one that I get asked a lot about uh, because I talk and teach about how to tap into and really fine tune and trust your inner guidance. And some people say, you know, I don't think I'm getting any guidance. Like, I just don't feel like I'm picking it up. And uh, maybe it's just me. So, first of all, I want to assure you that you all are receiving guidance. Uh, it's not for the chosen few. It's not a special thing. We all have the ability to receive it and we are receiving it. We're receiving it pretty much 24 seven, but there's a heck of a lot that we do in our humanness <laughs> that really kind of gets us in our own way. Okay. When it comes to that. So that's what I want to talk about today. And there's actually quite a few ways that we block ourselves. Today, I want to just touch on three and uh, go into a little bit about that. So if you're tuning in, feel free to write a comment. Let me know where you're coming from. Uh, share your name. And if you have questions, you can post a question. If you like what I'm talking about, please send me some thumbs up or some hearts. And you can even invite others to join in on this broadcast too so that uh, we can share this information and not keep it in the spiritual closet any longer. Um, all right, so we're gonna go ahead. So I have some notes because I don't want to forget anything and I'm just coming back from vacation and, and still in a bit of fuzzy mode. So I've had lots going on here. We had some construction going on in our household we were away. So it's been a little bit chaotic. So the first way that we sort of get in our own way when it comes to tuning into our inner guidance is not really slowing down enough to really receive it, right? Think of it, we live in a world of sensory overload pretty much 24 seven, there's stuff coming and going, technology is nonstop, we're always, you know, we're always on, like we don't really shut down. And that can really put up a roadblock in terms of you being able to really receive the guidance or to receive it clearly. Like I said, we're always receiving it, but sometimes because we are so busy with everything, it's coming and we're not picking it up, okay? So then what we, what I mean by slowing down enough to receive it is to really pay attention at specific times to what it is that you're hearing, feeling, thinking, um, you know, seeing, that kind of stuff. So let me just give you some examples. So you know nature, right? A lot of times we feel that, that call or that nudge to just get outside. And that's usually because in those moments, there's a lot that, you know, the angels, that your guides, that universe wants to communicate to you. And because you're so in your head and you're so overwhelmed with everything, you're not picking it up. So when you get that nudge to get outside, to be in nature, it's because they really want to talk to you. <laughs> And as you may know, when you go outside, there is something, you know, about being outside, being in nature that just allows us to switch off a little bit, right? We get out of our busy heads and we tune in more to ourselves. And so that's often when you will pick up like a really cool idea that you hadn't thought about, get a really creative insight, maybe figure out a way to solve a problem that you weren't able to figure out before. So that's one way that we can really open ourselves up even better to be more receptive to hearing that guidance. Um, also along the lines of that is water, right? So if you can be outside and even near water, that strengthens it even more. Now, not all of us are blessed to live in a place where perhaps there's uh, availability of oceans and rivers and lakes. I'm here in Alberta, which is kind of landlocked. Um, <laughs> we do have water, but I mean, it's not like living at the beach. You know what I mean? So you can re still receive that same kind of benefit from water though, just 
the, you know, when you're in the shower or when you're taking a bath, specifically if you're in the bath, throw some sea salt in there. It's really detoxifying. But while you're in the in the shower, in the bath, notice what's coming through for you, right? It's the same idea. You might get a really cool idea. You know, a lot of people have what they call their shower thoughts or their shower ideas. They're in there and all of a sudden stuff just kind of downloads and they're like, wow. You know, and then somebody once said, you know, they need to invent a whiteboard in the shower that's waterproof so you could capture these ideas because you think you're going to remember and then you step out of the shower and bang, they're gone and you're like, oh, that was such a good idea, right? So being around water, uh, salt water especially, is really beneficial too to allow you to pick up that guidance and to hear it more clearly. Same thing goes for exercise. So if you're getting, again, that nudge to exercise, to move your body in a way that feels good to you, it doesn't mean you have to go and run a marathon or anything like that. You know, maybe you just want to start doing some light stretching or you're feeling like this nudge to take a yoga class or to try out, you know, something different, maybe Pilates or just, you know, like I said, some way to move your body. That nudge will also come when, you know, spirit has something they want to communicate with you because you're just too busy in the day-to-day -to, -day to pay attention. So, you know, think about that. Maybe it's just simply going for a walk. Like I said, if you can do that in nature, then you're doubling up two things, right? You're getting outside and you're also moving your body. So that can really help you to tune in and receive what's coming through for you. Um, and then the other way too is even just mundane chores, right? Again, there's something about, you know, you're vacuuming, you're ironing, you're you know, dusting, you're doing those chores, like you're kind of turning your busy brain off a little bit and it just gives them that much space to kind of get in there with the guidance. So notice as you're doing household chores, is there a really cool idea that comes to you? Do you get a strong gut feeling about something? Um, do you suddenly kind of see almost like a movie playing out in front of your eyes or, you know, have, have that, um, I don't know if you've ever had this, where it's almost like something makes you turn your head and then you see something, right? Like maybe it's a word, or you might be, you know, ironing while the TV's on, and then something just makes you kind of tune over to the TV, and there's something there that, you know, really speaks to, you know, maybe a key message that way, right? So think about those types of things. That's, you know, how they will come through and bring you some guidance. So just to recap, the first way we block ourselves is not slowing down enough to tune in. So always pay very close attention to what you're thinking about, feeling, sensing, hearing, all of that while you are out in nature, exercising near water, and that can be in the shower, in the bath, and while you're doing chores. That's like key times that guidance will often come in. All right, the second way that we block ourselves from tuning into our guidance is trying to make it happen or forcing or pushing or trying to be in control, right? So for example, I'm just gonna use my own story. You know, over this past year, I've just felt like I really needed to course correct my business. I needed to get back to my real roots and what it is that fires me up. And of course, that's teaching people how to tune into their inner guidance. Because I'd kind of gotten off track. I'd kind of gone in another direction that I was capable of teaching and, and helping people with, but it wasn't what fired me up. It wasn't really my, you know, my, my passion. So uh, during that time of course correcting, I was asking for guidance. I was like, okay, I need to figure this out. And it was that, that kind of that push. I need to, I need to, I need to figure this out. I need to get an answer. I need clarity. I was trying to chase it down and, and, you know, instead of backing off a little bit and allowing it to come. And I always uh, like to give this analogy. Anytime you chase something, it runs from you. Nothing likes to be chased, right? It's fear energy. We don't like that. So, you know, if you're chasing down the ideal job, it's not going to be there. If you're chasing down the ideal partner, it's, they're not going to be there. If you're chasing down, you know, perfect health, it can be two steps ahead of you. So whatever it is, you have to kind of surrender you know, ask for what it is you want, universe, please bring me clarity about blah, 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 whatever it is. And then again, open yourself up to paying attention to the signs they're going to give you, you know, and again, when you're, you know, ironing or if you're working out or if you're in the shower, notice what's coming to you. That's when they're going to send you that information. So rather than trying to, you know, make it happen, if you're forcing it, you're going to block yourself. Okay. So I hope that's making sense. Um, what else did I want to say about that? Oh, also you have to, with that, along the same lines is letting go of your ways of thinking about it. You know, um, the old ways of thinking, 
you know, we hang on to it has to be this way and often that will also block you because the universe will bring you things in ways you never expected, right? So don't keep um, holding on to this picture of what it must look like kind of thing. That makes sense, okay? So, so far we've covered off the first way we block ourselves, which is just not slowing down enough to pay attention to it. And number two, forcing or pushing or, you know, trying to be in control of the process, okay? And the third way that we get in our own way about tapping into our inner guidance is being rigid in, like I said, what we think it must look like, right? A lot of times people think inner guidance is going to come as this, you know, heavenly moment where the, the, the skies open up and we hear choirs of angels and we have this divine vision of what everything is supposed to look like. And I will tell you that that is actually not what happens. In fact, it's very rare. Typically what happens is guidance will come very subtly. It's not the whack you over the head, like, whoa, there it is, kind of a thing. It's very subtle, right? Like I said, it's like an intuitive idea that gets planted in your brain or a very strong gut feeling, but how you will know that it's guidance is because it repeats. Okay, so that's the key. If you find that you keep having the same idea over and over again, or the same thought that pops into your head over and over again, or the same gut feeling keeps coming up, or you keep hearing the same thing over again, or seeing the same thing over again, or you just have this knowingness about something that doesn't go away. That's how you know it's guidance, okay? Because lucky for us, the angels are very tenacious. They know we're busy and that we're bombarded with all kinds of stuff, so they will keep bringing guidance over and over and over and over until we finally clue in, all right? So it's not that they're gonna give up on you. That's another thing people wonder, like, oh my gosh, if I don't get this, are they gonna just be like, forget it, you know? No, they won't, You'll, they'll, they'll keep at it, but it's nice when you can pick it up at the beginning, not like, you know, 10 steps later, right? So, um, yeah, you need to kind of just like let go of, of the idea or the notion that you're gonna see the full picture, the full reveal. They will give you guidance in breadcrumbs, okay? So what I mean by that is kind of next steps. So you say, Guy, you know, angels, I need help with this. And they'll give you some guidance on the next step to take. And then you do that. And then they'll give you the next step. And then they'll give you the next step. And then the next step. They're not going to show you the whole thing of like what you need to do and like make it a big, you know, strategic plan <laughs> for you to do. And they do that on purpose because that'd be really overwhelming, right? And, and, and often we are not, we have to build ourselves up to a point where we can come to an acceptance of um, what we can actually do with our life. Like we kind of have, a lot of people have issues with deservingness and like they have a comfort level of being here, right? But the universe didn't bring you here for you to just stay here. They want you to have all of this. But the concept of being able to have all of that, for a lot of people, it's like too much. So let me just give you an example of what I mean by that. You know, if they would have shown a 10-year-old Oprah Winfrey what her life was going to look like, that poor kid would probably be paralyzed and think, oh my gosh, like me? I can't do all of that. No, right? Like it would have been too overwhelming. So instead, you know, it's little breadcrumbs. Okay, now you're going to do this step and then we're going to lead you over here and then we're going to lead you over here and we're going to lead you over here. So that's why it's really important to constantly like really get good at, you know, asking for the guidance, knowing how it shows up for you, knowing how to recognize it and trust it enough to take an action step. Because when you take that action step, then they're going to give you the next action step and then the next action step. Right? But if you don't take action, the universe can't fully help you. They can't do everything for you. Remember, we don't have fairy godmothers, right? It's not, you know, the Wizard of Oz. We don't have Glinda the Good Witch who is, you know, helping us right behind the scenes. We have to do the work, but we don't do it alone. We do it together with our spiritual team. And when you can get really good at communicating with them, and following through with what they're telling you, my gosh, that's when it's a game changer, right? That's when it's amazing. You know, the right people show up for you, the right opportunities are there for you, 
the money is there to support you and I call it the red carpet effect. It is like a red carpet is unfurled for you and people just scratch their head and can't believe that they are actually living the life that they are living. And that's what I want for you. And that's why I teach what I teach so that you guys can get there too. So I hope this has been really helpful. So I just wanna recap on the three ways we block ourselves. One is not slowing down enough to hear it. And two is trying to force it, you know, push and strive and, and like catch it, right? Instead of backing off and surrendering and allowing the guidance to come. And then the third one is just being really rigid in our ideas of what it's supposed to look like. And knowing that it isn't going to be the heaven's open moment it's going to be very subtle guidance is subtle and that's why it's important to know how to recognize it because it isn't going to be the whoop whack you in the head kind of thing I mean sometimes that happens but it's not usually the way it happens all right so I hope you have uh, enjoyed this hope that this really helped and if it has helped I would love for you to share this out because this is an area where so many people get stuck right they're like I just don't feel like I'm getting guidance or I don't know what, what I'm doing wrong or you know and it isn't like I said everybody gets guidance it's not for the chosen few but in our humanness there are a lot of ways we block ourselves so these are just some of them there's a lot more <laughs> um, if you're interested in really diving deep in this topic and wanting to get further trainings on this and be aware of any courses or workshops that I'm doing around this topic, you're definitely gonna wanna get on my, on my mailing list because this is now going forward. I'm going to really be putting a lot more trainings and things like that together about this. So uh, the way that you can get on my mailing list is to go to RamonaRemesat.com forward slash free gift and you will um, get a free video series that I have that can get you started. It's called the three essential steps to getting anything you want in life. And so you'll get the, the three videos, one video a day for three days in your inbox. And then you'll also be on my list to get updates and more trainings and you'll always be the first to know when I'm offering something. So my community always gets first crack at everything. And I'll put that link below. Feel free to share that out too with others that might want to also be in the know when it comes to this subject matter. And I also wanna invite you to set your calendar for a very special episode of Takeaway Tip Tuesday that's coming up. So on August the 8th, I'm bringing on a very special guest who is going to talk about totem animals. She's a shamanic practitioner, also a Reiki master teacher, and she knows a ton about this subject. So I'm really excited because I know some, but I don't know a lot, and she's a wealth of information. So this will be your opportunity if you have questions about this to actually come on. You can um, speak live with her and ask your questions and get all of that um, subject matter cleared up for you. So invite your friends too. The more the merrier. I really wanna have a great turnout for this episode. And um, I'm gonna be sending out some email reminders. So again, get on the list because that way you'll be able to get the updates on everything. You won't miss anything. Um, but yeah, share that out with people. If you know they're really interested in that topic, then they will definitely wanna be here for that episode. So again, that's August 8th and it's gonna take place a little later that day. It's not gonna be at the regular time. It's gonna be at 3.30 Eastern, which is 1.30 Mountain. Okay, which is, let me just do the math right, uh, 12.30 Pacific. <laughs> there we go. Um, all right, everybody. So thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate you being here. I appreciate you taking the time to watch. Please like, comment, share, and this will get into more news feeds so that we can really help people get tuned into their guidance and not feel like they're walking around in the dark because let's do like the easier way. When you follow your guidance, it's a heck of a lot easier than kind of going at it blindly. Let me tell you, I know for sure because I've done it both the hard way and the easier way. So have a great week. Um, I will not be back next Tuesday with a Takeaway Tip Tuesday because I'm away again. And um, I won't be uh, able to um, be there, but you can catch me tomorrow morning back here with a daily angel guidance message. So I hope I'll see you then. Have a great day, everybody.